Hello and welcome to PMI's Uncommon Sense podcast, tools to improve your work forever. I'm Susanna Clark, Managing Partner with PMI, the Performance Improvement Consulting and Training Firm. Our Uncommon Sense podcast is a 15-minute conversation with our expert consultants. They talk a lot of common sense, although much of it is not common practice. And that's what this podcast is all about. We want you to be inspired to improve your business through learning more about the tools which can help you succeed and grow. Hello, today I'm joined by Warren Knight and we're talking about leadership and what it means to be a leader and a system of profound knowledge and how that is designed to support thinking of leaders. So Warren, help me understand more about the psychology as it relates to being an effective leader. So for me, uh, leadership is about change. It's about improvement. It's about transformation in the organisation. Um, you know, to, to, to lead people is to, in a sense, encourage movement, okay, right. in, in a direction. Yes. Um, and of course, you know, if, if the organisation is, is good where it is right now, in a sense, it doesn't need leadership. So very much leadership is about change. Um, and so we have to recognise, obviously, that, um, and this is, this is key for leaders, that they need to be able to motivate staff members to come on this change journey mm-hmm. with them. Um, and that's particularly challenging because typically, you know, we're, we're all, as staff members, we're all pretty much happy and comfortable where we are <laughs> right now. And, yes. and so organisational change often will mean that that we have to transition, we have to learn new skills, we have to adopt different practices, um, maybe different ways of thinking in order to transition and be competent and comfortable in the new situation. Well, I was just going to say, so I imagine for, for only in some cases, organisations that have got a well-established system of continuous improvement, this is the norm. They, they know, everyone knows things are changing all the time because things are improving all the time. But actually for many, they don't come to work with that perception, do they? They come to work thinking that everything's going to be the way it was yesterday. Yes. <laughs> and not and that they're not in a changing environment. That's right. That's right. You know, and um, we, we all take a certain amount of, of comfort and, and, and confidence in that mm. place of safety, which we call today the present, because yes. we, we know it, we're familiar with it, and we're, we're competent in that place. True, true transformation in, in organisational performance, when we're really trying to create something new, typically that, that kind of transformation doesn't, doesn't happen without people transforming. Yes. Without their thinking, their, their abilities, their skills significantly changing and um the job of the leader is to find a way of motivating those staff members to not only kind of accept that that's going to happen but actually Mm. be willing and wanting to make that personal change it's easy to assume that everyone wants to come with you isn't it if you've got a vision of a better brighter future somewhat easy to assume that everyone will see it immediately and want to come with you yeah absolutely but of course the the power of staying where one is 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 very alluring um and and actually interestingly um if if we're not directly involved in the change we won't really understand the change we won't understand the implications of the change and therefore, it's unlikely we're really going to see kind of the what's in it for me. Why, why is this important for me? And of course, if, if I can't figure that out, why is this important for me to get on board with this? Then 
then the comfort of the current situation is going to overwhelm, isn't it? Comfort's the key word. People become comfortable in their everyday work and in their everyday practices, and and it's um, frightening, yeah, not comforting to think that everything's going to be different. Yes, yes. So what we're trying to do is create this kind of positive motivation mm-hmm. um, to to move forward. So and and of course, you know. We're, all, all the four thinking principles of system found knowledge are obviously linked. It's not about being an expert in one. We've got to think, we've got to be able to relate to all of them. And of course, this is, this is sort of strongly connected with variation because what motivates an individual, well, every, every person will be different in terms of what mm-hmm. motivates them. And so it's mm-hmm. very important for the leader to make sure that they take the time to understand the individual and and their motivations so then when you're thinking about that in a large organization i'm thinking that let's say an organization who's got five thousand people let's say you know it's not it not not huge but it's a, a good enough number that you haven't got the chance to get round to every one of those five thousand leadership has and those skills have to be at several levels don't they absolutely absolutely and and it's so you know, as if you're the ultimate leader, it's it's how you're motivating your team to then mm. be able to do the right thing and motivate their teams and, and so yes. on and so on and so on. Interestingly, of course, that suggests that the people who are leading the change often also need to change themselves and have to consider their own motivations. Yes. So how does a leader need to think in terms of those motivations? Yeah, and good being question. Able to tap into them. Yeah, well, well firstly I guess what we need to do is um as I just said, you know, every every person will be different in terms of what motivates them. However, it's it's worth recognizing that broadly there's two categories of 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 motivation. There's what we might call intrinsic motivation, motivation that comes from within. This this kind of theory that we're we're all born with 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 a level of intrinsic motivation to to better ourselves, to learn, to um, cooperate, um, and actually, when when we when we do better ourselves, we do improve, we make improvements, um, we, we we get we get much personal pleasure from that, which mm. kind of drives further or increases our motivation often hear about teams who are improvement teams who are doing um, exercises for instance where they're trying to also engender a degree of curiosity from those people to try new things and try different things I talked recently to somebody they were they were designing paper airplanes and launching them and trying to get them to work out how they could always launch them in the to arrive in the in the same circle of space which initially they couldn't do. Yeah. Eventually they worked it through and that helps them get a vision of how they need to think differently. Yeah, yeah. And and the satisfaction that they get from of, of from having overcome that problem. You know. Yes. And and actually there's a there's a lot of research which connects sort of mental well being with our you know, uh, h- how much we open ourselves up for challenge and, and problem solving and, and, and the, the positive sort of uh, stigma we get from that. Personally, I, I like to, to hear about people's hobbies because o- often, you know, you, you get a sense that people really do challenge themselves to improve in their hobbies mm-hmm. and things that mm-hmm. they do to get better at. So with that kind of motivation, it's about, from a leadership perspective, is well, how do we tap into that? natural desire okay and Mm -hmm. but related to the change that we need to do within the organization yeah the other type of motivation of course is is what comes um from the outside so extrinsic motivation so typically in organizational sense this is this is pay it's reward it's it's bonuses it's the things that that um the the organization can offer staff in recognition for for performance and all of us we are we are you know we, we will be motivated by a blend of intrinsic and ex- extrinsic factors yes um however if, if we go back to what we were saying earlier about 
the type of change we're talking about here, where what we're actually requiring is, you know, some level of trans, some level of um, development of, of, of staff members, some level of transformation in thinking, then then really leaders need to recognise it's the intrinsic motivation that is required if if we're to make that type of change and also if we're to make change sustainable. I, I mean, I was experienced it with somebody recently who started a new job and they uh, were thrilled that they found that they got time off in lieu. Six months down the line, if they can't get their time off in lieu at the time they want it to link up to their holiday or something else that's going on, then, you know, they're, they're really fed up about the time off in lieu. It's no longer become a joy. You know, this Sakano model, isn't it? Yes. Of, of how something goes from a delight factor, you keep giving it, it just becomes an expected factor. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So although, obviously, it's going to be a blend of the two, if we're looking for that real deep cultural change, then then it needs to be intrinsically driven, in essence. Um, so the job of the leader then is to recognise the need, to understand the psychology of change themselves, and then to put into place that system which is going to really, you know, to your point, focus on intrinsic motivation. And actually, to do that, creates more work for the leader. It makes things more challenging, <laughs> more difficult, because that that intrinsic motivation will only come if we are engaged with the change. Staff members need to be um, closely involved in analysing the situation, coming up with solutions, feeling like they're empowered to do that. They're part of yeah. the solution. That's that's how we're going to get that kind of intrinsic motivation going. But of course, that's quite challenging for a leader. The leader needs to be prepared to, in a way, to let go. Of, of course, the role of a leader is to set that sort of vision, okay, and to make sure that the organisation is travelling in the right direction. So they've also got to be willing to listen to the ideas that the people come yes. up with. yes. To get and, them and to the right place. That. And to work okay. with that. Thank you so much for joining us. You can find more episodes of our Uncommon Sense Tools to Improve Your Work Forever in our Knowledge Hub on our website. Or, of course, your favourite podcast platform. And do subscribe so you never miss an episode. Don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode, where you'll find links to more content on this topic which includes webinar recordings, toolbox guides, blogs, and infographics, and our training page. You can always drop us a line on team at pmi.co.uk and arrange a time to have a call to talk about how these tools can help you in your organization. We'd really love to hear from you.